Today on Logan Lee Adventures, I take you to Buenos Aires, Koreatown in the neighborhood of Floresta. We do a little bit of Korean cafe hopping, shopping, and of course, eating out of this world Korean dishes. Look how cute this shack is. It's called Mr. Hot Dog. Very fitting, it serves Korean corn dogs. As you can see, I'm, I'm gonna get one because because of that. Just literally because of that. I hope it's that size too. Or this size. I'll be down for this size. Hello. Hey. Yeah. With the... Oh, yeah, yeah. Since that corn dog is so cute, I'm literally gonna order it. And it's apparently this is like french fries outside and then there's cheese inside as well. I cannot wait for it. So were you born in Buenos Aires? Yeah, yeah I, I was born in Buenos Aires. Yeah. But my parents are Korean. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they moved here from Korea? Yeah, yeah. They moved here to Buenos Aires. Well, um, you should come here and try and suck my sausage. <laughs> it's really nice. I'm Mr. Hot Dog. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Hot Dog. Yeah, Mr. Hot Dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, come and lick and suck it. It's really nice. It looks very tasty. Yeah, yeah, you should try it right now. You should try it. Yeah. <laughs> Are you gonna put it in cheese? <laughs> yeah, with some cheese, uh, maybe milk. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> what is your name, by the way? Oh, my name is Julian. Julian. In Spanish, Julian. Ah, okay. Mm, it's hot. Mmm, <laughs> it's so good. Mmm. How accurate is this corn dog to this corn dog? Look at it. Oh, 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 oh. Quite accurate, right? Oh. Well, definitely this one. This one. This one. Oh, oh. Okay, so I got some ketchup. I got some mayo on my Korean corn dog. It looks so good. I mean, I'm at Mr. Hot Dog, and this is what Mr. Hot Dog specializes. In. So, should I, I just go for it? Crunch in with all the the cool French fries sticking out. All right. Mm. Ah! <laughs> got, I gotta say this is this is a big one. This is a big one. I did not expect it to be this this big. Like literally, look at my look at my hand. My fist is twice the size of my fist. The cheese dog. Mmm. Mmm. Damn. This cheese dog. This is called mandu. 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 What what is in it? You need you have meat. Yep. And vegetables. Ah, like a, is it pork or beef? Yeah, pork, pork. Pork. Oh, I love these. These are so nice. Yeah, you should try it. It's really good. Okay. Look at this and the spiciness on it. Ooh! <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, let me try it. Let me try it. Mmm. Mmm. That was so good. Y'all, this is so tasty. So, so what is the name of this again? This, that, that one is hot dog. And this one is tokochi. Okay. Korean food. It's so good and with the with the spice on it. Yeah. Mm. Mm. That is crazy. Oh my god. And the crispiness? Mm. I'm in love. I keep saying this with every single neighborhood I visit, but as best as I love Palermo, I should just move here. Move where the food is because I can eat this every single day. Like you can always cab everywhere else, Uber everywhere else, but it'd be nice to just have this right outside and just walk walk. This is like one euro each. Hey everyone, I am starting today off exploring Koreatown in Buenos Aires. So Koreatown is this neighborhood that is just, I think, never eat, right? We, west, 
of where I live in Palermo and it's actually the furthest because usually when I explore Buenos Aires I explore like north to south and I never I mean east is the water so there's nothing out out there and then west is the rest of the other parts of the city but I never I'm never out here and so today I'm going to explore this side of Flor I believe the bigger neighborhood is called Floralis which sounds very very beautiful and pretty and within Floralis is this neighborhood which is Korea town that is thriving with the Korean immigration Great immigrated community here and I'm gonna start the day off at this cute cafe called Shiba look at this this orange aesthetic I'm going to order probably a flat white get some little caffeine going in me and then I'm gonna hit the streets and explore around but already just looking around there's like a really cool vibe going on there seems to be a lot of I guess this is the place to go shopping because there's fabrics everywhere on the streets um, like pile fabric literally uh, and lots of cool boutiques I'm just looking around because there's just so many cool places that I'm making mental notes to check out and of course bring you along with me to explore this beautiful day that we have another blue blue skies days and I just love the aesthetic of this cafe how orange it is everywhere the orange seats, the umbrellas, and then of course the illustrations of the shibas everywhere too. I'm gonna order my flat white and then get down to it and then we're gonna explore Koreatown today. And they have these cute mugs, like this place is just too adorable. And also, I, I mean we have a lot to eat today because there's so many good places but you're just coming here for a full day or half a day to enjoy the whole morning or today to work from. There's so many pastries here. I hate how fun. Oh my gosh. Maybe I'll get them to go because this looks really great. Y'all, look how cute this is. Oh my gosh. Can you see it? The Shiba little dog latte art. Oh! There's so many boutiques here, like just up and down the block of different stores. Looks so good, like all the different clothing that they carry too. My impression of Koreatown so far in Buenos Aires a lot of boutiques, a lot of restaurants that look so good, and a lot of people that looks like me that just walks around and I'm like, these are locals here, you know, Korean, Argentinian locals, and it's just really cool to see people, like I just blend in, essentially. So you get these mini stores just up and down Koreatown, and honestly, I haven't seen anything like it. Okay, in the center and the high street, sure, there's a lot of shops. But for like anything, okay, and then Palermo Soho, the neighborhood that I live in, it has a lot of shops and stores. Not, I, I would say it's like definitely much more posh here. But here you get a wide variety from what I've seen so far in the neighborhood, a wide variety of clothing for a wide variety of budget as well. store is pretty cool it has all these menswear like look at this one it's so nice what a nice color it has so many items here for guys especially a lot of the boutiques here are like women around this, like the neighborhood but this one a house thing so maybe i will go shopping maybe i will get something I'm checking out Ginny's coffee and I'm starting off with a matcha latte <laughs> so just to start off yeah I know but there's seriously so many things I want to try here that this is this is just number one okay but already just from sitting out on the terrace this beautiful balcony 
It really feels like I'm in South Korea. It literally has a very similar vibe. Maybe it's because of all the Korean that's being spoken around me. And it's just literally being inside this cafe. You see how the community is just thriving here. And the community is so big. Like, I didn't even know that there was that many Korean immigrants who immigrated here to make a neighborhood, yet here we are. So yummy. I'm already in love with this cafe. I'm like thinking I need to come back here with my laptop and work remote from here, study my Spanish from here because it's such a nice spot to be sitting out. I'm just watching the street go by. There's a little boutique down there. I have a Korean barbecue lunch after this. And I thought after the matcha latte, uh, I would be like, okay, well, you know, like I've heard from my friend Sato. He said that the bingsu like the portion is kind of small, so I was like, okay, well, I figure I can just get that as a pre-dessert to the meal. What do you mean small? This is huge. This portion of bingsu. This is my hand. This is the bingsu. It's huge. It's also so good. Mm -hmm. It's so so fucking good. So it's matcha bing soup with some red bean on top and ice slash coconut flakes as well. You can see this. Ooh. I'm meeting up with my friend here for Korean barbecue, uh, Yugane. But from the outside, it looks completely closed, right? Like. Can't see anything in. Can't even peek in. It is blocked, and there's like chains. All the just press this, and that's it. Like that's the only way in. Like aside from that, how how would you know? How would you know? <laughs> You'll definitely remember my friend Lucio's from my previous vlogs in Buenos Aires, like the one where we went to the art galleries together in Rodero. And I also had the best steak in the country together after my polo lessons in another vlog. So now we're gonna chow down for some Korean barbecue. So I ordered a Coke and we got a whole huge bottle. So and then the huge bottle. So we're having a feast. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> it just keeps on coming. <laughs> it's like Dude. Cool. It's like cool. <laughs> <laughs> the beer. Really like, I mean I shouldn't be so surprised because it is South America but the same thing. I'm gonna cut it for us. Right. It's actually hard. <laughs> <laughs> And you get some. You have this here. So just get, you can pick it up with like pick up the lettuce and then you can kind of make like a taco wrap with it. So you put your meat on the taco, you put, you can put different sides into the lettuce and then add the uh, the sauce that was in there onto it. Yeah. I call this recolonization. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit, this is the bone of things. Yeah. That's a major. We demolished that. Look at that. I'm about to pass out. Like, that was so good. <laughs> I'm so full. <laughs> 
I love these days where I just get to explore Buenos Aires and just walk around and not know what to expect. Like, it, look at the street sign. Literally, part of it is in Korean. That's pretty cool. <laughs> this all down here is Passage Roberto Gordoy, which is basically this long passage that alleyway that they transformed into a gastronomic alleyway. So up and down there's karaoke bars, there's restaurants, um, all Korean of course because we're in Korean town. So it's pretty cool to see like there's just terraces set up and at night which we'll be here for all of this gets really really vibrant even more because you know people are like drinking soju up on the terrace it's really cool to have like this dedicated characteristic gastronomic alley for koreatown two main things here is food and fashion there's so many great small boutiques but you know maybe like I hardly wear anything like I pack really light and just like carry on for Buenos Aires so I've been wearing like the same three sweaters with multiple different t-shirts underneath I just change this and then I just throw this over uh, that's it and so fashion locked out the food food I can always eat you know do you know how much I eat I always eat so I found this place called Mango and it specializes in Korean fried chicken. I heard it's really good, it's one of the best Korean fried chicken places in town and we're in the neighborhood for it too. But the thing about Korean restaurants in this neighborhood and Korean restaurants here is that it's very nondescript. So we, you saw me coming into from here and the windows are all blurred out. You have to ring and get buzz in and then inside is very like sometimes it's just chill. There's like rips in the couch. There is like there's no there's no frills about it here for sure. But I cannot wait for the food because the food is it's like everybody's been talking about it. This is the place that I go for it. So, of course, I've been craving me some Korean chicken and came to the right place and to order some. Should I just... I'm just gonna forego the fork, okay? Let's not be so polite here. I'm gonna use my hands as I would any other time. All right, so these are boneless. Yeah. Oh. It's with their special sauce, Korean sauce, for the fried chicken. And it has a little a spicy kick to it. Mm. This is like genuinely good spicy because Argentina doesn't really do spicy. So when there is a place that does spicy, I'm always impressed. That was ooh, sunny out here. That was delicious. This is also what I was talking about, what I was mentioning. Like the exterior, there's so many places like this that looks like a speakeasy. <laughs> I'm just calling it a speakeasy because it's so like nondescript like this but if you're from Buenos Aires or from K-Town specifically or you know you like dine here go out in K-Town a lot can you just let me know in the comments like what is up with all these Korean restaurants that are like hard to find hard to get to and walk by and you'll just miss it like let me know let me know now the thing about a faraway neighborhood far away it's really only like a 20 minute drive from my neighborhood in Palermo, Soho, which is like even San Telmo, definitely La Boca is even further away. But think about a far away neighborhood like Floresta, which is where Koreatown is based, is that mostly 
tourists don't come here like you're gonna be here with the locals here so especially tourists or people who even a lot of people who live in Buenos Aires don't often come here unless like you're in the surrounding neighborhood so and I, and I get that you know it's it can be far away but if you do come here to explore Koreatown it is quite a treasure to explore the outer neighborhoods around Floresta could be a little rough could be a little rough but there's just so many hidden gems to explore and discover here that it makes it so worth it you know like maybe not your first time that you come to buenos aires if you are on a time crunch and you only have a few days because there's so many cool neighborhoods to see and to go to if you've been following my journey in buenos aires you would have seen that with all the different neighborhoods kind of basically a vlog per neighborhood right now uh but here it's you know like i would definitely recommend you come in here if you have a lot of time or if you're living here for a longer period of time okay so clearly by now we are having a whole food tour of koreatown in front of ours i'm gonna lean into that theme for this vlog for this whole epic exploration of this wonderful kind beautiful neighborhood that i just absolutely love so an underrated underrated neighborhood in buenos aires in floresta so i just love it here so much and this whole neighborhood it, it is really cool just to be able to, just to walk around to try different things here and there come if you're peckish I was walking down Ruperto Cordoy, which is the popular street where everybody goes out in K-Town. Everybody hits up the karaoke and soju out here. And I saw this unassuming restaurant, like all restaurants in K-Town. They're just so little secret nooks and corners. And I peeked my head in and I was like, hey, what, what is this place? And turns out they have this really laid back terrace that overlooks Roberto Godoy Street, just down there. You can already hear some of the music pumping. I can hear it. I can hear it. And so up here they have a chill terrace. And this place is called Chung. So Chung is by the chef Francisco, who I was greeted by downstairs. He's a Korean chef who does Korean Chinese combination of cuisine here at Chung. So basically, it's a little bit of mixture of both culture into what is created the specialty at this restaurant i definitely need to get more hungry i mean i'm hung i'm always hungry you know that but like i've been eating like a storm so i need to <laughs> i don't know do more jumping jacks jog but from all the walking around the neighborhood that always helps that's how it helps gosh this plate is huge so the chef Francisco was not kidding, so when I was ordering it, he said, so I have big hands, the chef said he has big hands, so he that means he has a big appetite, so that means that he likes his portion to be big, and he was not playing around. And one thing I've learned about Koreatown is that everywhere I've been to so far, the portions, they fit how much my heart fits this neighborhood. <laughs> Okay, this is my size, my fist, okay? <laughs> like, just, just, like, <laughs> this dish is called chacheng negra, which means chacheng is like this noodly dish, and it's this black sauce, basically this type of like black bean paste sauce, and I got it with seafood, so we have some squid in here, which I love, we have some mussels in here as well. Oh my gosh, I don't know how to finish all of this. I'm so happy about the portion size though. And then the chef said, he's such a sweet guy. He said, because I'm new here, he's going to give, this is a whole nother dish on the menu. Usually it's like much bigger size, but he's gonna let me try it, which is this type of seafood soup. So we're going with the whole seafood theme here, which is a nice break from the Korean barbecue, from the Korean hot dog, a little seaside to go with the land surf to the turf here. Looks delicious. Okay. Mm. Mm. Wow. Like, I'm a 
person who loves big portions and appreciate big portions, so K-Town, y'all be treating me so well here. Of course, I can't be in Koreatown without checking out the Korean grocery stores here. I mean, look at all this produce. Let's go inside and explore it. Have it. Yes, yes. Oh my god. Even more yes. Oh my god, this is what I grew up with. Y'all, they have everything here. Hey, this is pretty good price too. Also 2000 per per pack. Y'all, they have everything here. Like all the awesome Korean ramen. I mean, that's what I really love. Like that's this is what I stock up at home. At home, you know. Classics here too. I have never seen it this huge before. One kilogram of gochujang. What? Ooh, it is heavy. Are going to be checking out Mr. Bar. So Mr. Bar is this very, very discreet place in Floresta in Koreatown. So you see the sign, you know you're at Mr. Bar. It's literally a mustache with a barcode. Okay, so on the street, as you can see, you're like, am I at the right place? Like, did my Uber drop me off at the correct place? Because what, like, this is it. Like, what is this? What is this? Is like a garage door. Show you properly. So I love this like speak. I call it a speakeasy restaurant because literally there's you can't see anything at all. I'll show you like the neighbors next door. That's just that's not even a restaurant. That's just an apartment. Okay. So you're here. How do like how do I get in? What do I do? There's this bell, right? Koreatown, you know, you saw you saw where I was at the other place for Korean chicken. They're discreet here. Like more discreet than any grinder hookups I ever had. So you click this bell. It's buzzing. Okay. okay, there we go. Going in. I literally just push in the door. Okay, it's like an huge industrial freezer door. And then this is this is the restaurant. Like how cute is this? So cute. But I'm telling you, this is this is the entryway. Do not get sketch out. Don't worry. You're like, what? Like where am I? What? Like bridges, bridges, filled with drinks, soju. I saw you come through here. Look like you're about to get like chopped up. But no, wait for it, okay? Wait for it. You come here around the corner. And then you step into Mr. Bar. So this is Mr. Bar, which is a very nondescript Korean bar slash restaurant. As you can see, that's the kitchen. And they have such fantastic food here. I cannot wait. Y'all don't worry about how much food I'm getting. This is late into the evening now, so I have much more room in my stomach to eat again. I swear I'm abusing my metabolism for the last time. Right, for the first course, we're getting this Supa Buddha. It's, that's the name here. There's a more traditional Korean name for it, but it is like kind of like a hot pot filled with like, so you can see there's noodles, there's some peppers, some sausages, Bunch of things like tofu here too. Okay, we can mix this boy up to cook the noodles. Oh my 
my goodness, it's cheese taboki. This cheese taboki is such a surprise. It's so delicious. And then the more we eat, we found out that there's noodles underneath too. Like, damn. And it's such good noodles. It's like the sticky flat ones. Mmm. may have ordered a bit too much, per usual. But in all fairness, did not know that it was going to be this much portions. Like this large of a meal. But it's so good, it's so yummy. Mmm. Oh my god. It's good how it is. So crunchy. Oh wow. <laughs> I love it here. <laughs>